morning edition. They would have asset higher than the value of the lot, and therefore they may not have to come up with any deposit to construct their home. Meeting the high demands for affordable homes in the Bahamas also. There's responsibilities as it relates to uh, not discriminating against persons who are HIV positive. There is responsibility for yourself in terms of protecting yourself and protecting your partner. It's World AIDS Day and the Bahamas remains in the fight to know your status and... So we try to do our best to accommodate our customers, specifically those who who know who frequently comes to our stores. The Christmas trees have arrived. Hear about the prices to make the right purchase. We have those stories and much more when the morning edition comes right back. First, it's more than just our name, more than just our achievements. It's our nature, and it's where we put our customers. At Bahamas First, we've refreshed our look, but our nature remains the same. We design insurance solutions that protect our customers from life's uncertainties, whatever they may be. We equip you for the future so that you can recover stronger. Bahamas First, what's first for you comes first for us. We're here to help you. We're here to hold your hand. We're here to support you. I think it's everyone who sacrifices their life to serve the needs of others are all heroes. So we all just kind of get together and do what's right for our patients. The human connection is what bonds all of us. I'm truly and proud to be part of the Pineapple family. What matters most is your health. Be proactive about it. I'm LaDawn Davis. Thank you so much for waking up with us. It's December and Christmas is near. We can expect a strong cold front that will move swiftly across the island chain, ushering seasonal cooler temperatures and strong breezes as a high pressure rapidly builds in its wake. Weather partly cloudy and humid ahead of the front, but turning cool and breezy later in the day. Also expect increasing cloudiness along with widely scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms. So grab out a nice sweater and an umbrella. We now head on out to our streets where Lloyd Allen and the morning traffic team has your daily traffic commute. The traffic report is sponsored by Bahamas First. First in insurance, today, tomorrow. Yes, good morning, LaDawn. Good morning, Bahamas. It is the start of your Tuesday morning, and we're giving you your first look at traffic. Now, this one coming in from University Drive. And as uh, most persons are experiencing here in the capital, it is wet on the outdoors. And so, of course, an advisory going out to motorists is to drive with caution and with care as you're making your rounds to your various destinations. Also, today is one of those days you do not want to forget your umbrella. This morning, we're also joined by Sergeant Crestonia Johnson, who is a... Uh, very, very gracefully holding the umbrella for us this morning. Uh, she's giving us a picture of traffic over the past 24-hour period. And pleasant good morning to you and a pleasant good morning, Bahamas. Over the 24-hour period, we've had a total of 11 accidents that were investigated by the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Division. Seven of those accidents involved damage. Three of those accidents involved injury and one accident was a hit and run accident at this time we still have 10 persons who remain hospitalized as a result of being involved in a traffic accident and officer johnson uh the very obvious it is wet on the outdoors but what advice can you offer to motorists uh beyond uh, caution and care as they drive yes well for example I, I, it always is that added caution and care but we, we tend to go into the normal way of operating on the street especially when it comes time to just getting to work or getting to a destination that we need to get to at a particular time so again you see that it's wet outdoors if you are to be at a particular location within a, a specified period we ask that you leave it a bit earlier we, we we expect a number of persons to be obstructed as it seems to rain and we have a number of, of um, potholes and accumulated in certain areas so as much as possible we advise the general public to get out ahead of time so you can beat that traffic rush so again yes just 
when you're on the street, my favorite line, be your brother's keeper. And please, please, if you're using your headlights, please not use the bright beams. You want to turn down the bright beams because you're going to obstruct the, the other driver from seeing what's going on on the street. All right. So, of course, that's a complete look at your morning traffic for this Tuesday. And again, you'd want to drive with caution and care as roads are wet. And that's expected for most of the day. That's been a look at your morning traffic report for the morning edition. Lloyd Allen, ZNS Network News. Off the top this Tuesday, another giant step to provide more affordable homes for Bahamians. Groundbroken yesterday will allow more residents, especially young professionals, to become land and homeowners. The price tag for a government service lot starts at $15,000 here in New Providence and less than $10,000 in the Family Islands. Construction of the Carmichael Village Housing Subdivision, comprising of some 365 lots to accommodate single and multiple family housing, has already begun. Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, on the Service Lots Initiative. The lots are valued at such low price for these individuals. I have engaged with discussion with the Mortgage Corporation and have been informed that there's a possibility that because the lots are valued at such a low value, individuals would have, have, they would have asset higher than the value of the lot and therefore they may not have to come up with any deposit to construct their homes. We've identified land somewhere in the west, and that land would be divided, subdivided, with proper infrastructure, condominium complexes, etc., and an upscale development will be developed. 10% of the service lots in Carmichael Village here today will be allotted to the disabled Bahamians. And these individuals, because the lots would be given to them quite early, can make the necessary adjustment to their homes to accommodate their disabilities. Some good news for Eleutha residents. COVID-19 restrictions placed on that island have been lifted. The Prime Minister thanked residents for their cooperation, noting that in Eleuthera, curfew would now commence at 10 p.m. as opposed to 6 p.m. Also, also indoor and outdoor restaurants can now function. However, he advised residents to observe the safety protocols to decrease the spread of the virus there. The Ministry of Education released a strategic plan for the reopening of school, detailing the work done and proposals for campus management. School managers have to designate a space as a holding area in the event of a suspected COVID-19 case. They're also required to dedicate a room to be used to address health concerns. The plan also speaks to the isolation of the infected individual, the shutdown of the area, and consultation with the Ministry of Health Surveillance Unit. The plan also also includes the requirement of mask wearing to enter campuses and to enter any school transportation systems. Meanwhile, inter-school competitions, including the spelling bee and national debates, will be held virtually. Today is World AIDS Day, a time set aside to not only raise awareness on prevention and control, but to remember those who are living with and died from the killer disease. Here in the Bahamas, some 7,000 Bahamians are infected with the disease, and statistics reveal that commercial workers, men having sex with men, and young people under the age of 30 are at a higher risk. President of the Bahamas AIDS Foundation, Lady Camille Barnett, says while the number of new infected cases in the Bahamas are down, she is still encouraging Bahamians to not only protect themselves but to know their status. The numbers of uh, people who are hospitalized are going down, the number of new cases are going down, uh, the number of deaths are going down. So we are, we are headed absolutely in the right direction. Um, it may be a little slow for our purposes, but we are headed in the right direction. We're doing the right things um, in our country. The theme for World AIDS Day this year in the Bahamas is global uh, solidarity, shared responsibility. And I think that's what needs to happen in order for us to continue to improve our statistics. Everyone has to take responsibility for themselves um, and, you know, and well, there's responsibilities as it relates to uh, not discriminating against persons who are HIV positive. There is responsibility for yourself in terms of protecting yourself and protecting your partner. 
Additionally, Lady Barnett credits the foundation's ongoing educational campaign for the decline in numbers. She also shares plans to spearhead a Family Island AIDS campaign in the new year. We're hoping to get funding to be able to go into because it's not cheap to go into the family islands to do uh, what we call AIDS 101. Uh, but we're hoping to get funding to be able to do that. We need funding to be able to do that, to go into the family. We can't neglect the family islands, even though, you know, the 70 plus percent of the cases are in New Providence. But the point is that there are cases on the family islands as well, too. And so we do need to be able to get into the family islands. And still to come, a look at the sale of Christmas trees and how to shop for a good deal. That and more in the Morning Edition continues. Dr. McMillan, I do not appreciate the way you are raising your voice inside my place. You know something? You, you Pastor, African? Pastor. Let, let me tell you, in 10 days, You'll be out of here. Pastor, I do not give... I'm not... I'm, I'm I, not interested in what you're saying. I do not give a donkey's hoof. I have my connections. I am not afraid of your immigration. It is just like Gumpa is a baby. Pastor Gumpa friends, family and pasta Gumpa. Pastor Gumpa friends, family and pasta Gumpa. Guess who's back? Yours truly on the OT. Starting Monday, November 9th at 9 a.m. on 1540 a.m., 104.5 FM, and on the ZNS Television Network. Starting once again, November 9th, we'll be going Mondays and Wednesdays. We may be in COVID, but nothing stops this show. The OT is back. Welcome back. You probably heard about, uh, quite a bit about diversifying the Bahamian economy and with tourism numbers down, the idea is still being discussed. Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Dionisio Diagular, sharing his views on those numbers. There's lots of people saying that we got to get out of this industry and we got to move to another industry. And while that's maybe an altruistic goal up until the onset of COVID, tourism was one of the fastest growing sectors on the planet. Uh, more and more people were traveling and more and more people have a willingness and ability to travel. So if you have to pick a sector to be in, one that is growing, tourism is an excellent uh, sector to be strong in. Unfortunately, when you get uh, uh, pandemics and uh, um, hurricanes, uh, the impact is, is pronounced. COVID-19 has crippled the bottom lines of many Bahamians who have lost their jobs and are impacted financially as a result of a direct hit to the country's economy. And as a Christmas holiday approaches, some persons are finding it difficult to purchase a Christmas tree and keep up with the holiday tradition. Well, Chairman of the Price Control Commission, Danny Sumner, says inspectors are closely monitoring the prices offered and he is urging consumers to continue to shop around for the best deals. We know Bohemian love that aroma, that scent in their homes. But the complaint coming in now is that uh, the prices are very high. Um, I know to some extent that the Christmas tree manufacturers in Canada and other places have uh, slightly gone up on their production of these trees. However, uh, we would like for the importers and the sellers of these trees to be mindful to the Bahamian public. Uh, Christmas is a time of giving and sharing, and the trees in the homes are a reflection of the joy and peace of the Christmas season. Christmas tree sales are a bit low across the capital due to the threat of COVID-19. Christmas trees around town are being sold for as low as $85 or even higher, depending on the height and size of the tree. Sales manager of Samilo Butler and Distributors, Kent Forbes, remains hopeful, though, that sales will pick up even before Christmas Eve. We sold about 200 trees. Uh, normally, we bring, in a, 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 uh, we bring in several containers of trees. Again, we probably just we brought in just one container, uh, just again, because of the, the current times. And how many do you have now? And now we have probably about 300, uh, maybe 250 left. We've been selling Christmas trees from uh, actually the week of Thanksgiving, and things have been a little bit slow. 
And it's obviously we understand because of the times as we're in right now, it's more of a challenge. So again, we try to make it more affordable because you know, Marla Butler has always been uh, the company that gives back to the community. So we try to do our best to accommodate our customers, specifically those who, who, know, who frequently come and sit to our stores. Well, the Price Commission has received reports about the high prices of Christmas trees at local businesses around town. Forbes says they're doing all they can to meet the needs of customers. Some vendors are extremely expensive. Uh, like I said, Milo Butler, we try our best to, to meet the needs of our, our customers. You know, that's, that's key. You know, that's what we are, we are about. We are about the, people's, uh, the people and the community at large. So we try to make our things uh, more affordable. So I would encourage uh, shoppers to come down and check out Milo Butler's service right on Peace Street. You know, look at the trees and we'll, we'll, we'll make sure you leave with something in your hands, you know, because we want to brighten up the holidays, even though, you know, we're in a, in a bad situation. I can't wait for the holidays. Stay close. We've got more right after this. You're watching The Morning Edition. Peter, are you ready to be baptized? Yes, sir. Have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Of course. I see demons in you. There are demons. Get out. Get out, demons. Get out. Get out. I will pray for you. In the name of Jesus. The Lord, the Lord. Friends, family and Asta Gumpa. Gumpa friends. Family and Asta Gumpa. Asta Gumpa friends. Family and Asta Gumpa. Welcome back. Well, the Cultural Month will be observed, and with the pandemic, officials have taken steps to make various adjustments to their regular activities. Lloyd Allen joins us live with the Director of Culture. Good morning again, Lloyd. Well, good morning again, LaDon. Good morning, Bahamas. This morning, we are here at the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture on University Drive. And I came here my Sunday's best to let these people know I'm still mad that they have no junk new this year. But anyhow, Director of Culture, that's uh, Rowena Poitier, Sutherland. She says she can fix that problem. Wama hey, Sutherland, hey, first hey. thing, welcome to the morning edition. And how can you help me th uh, this year? Oh, man, you put me on the spot. Good morning, Bahamas. Good morning, Lloyd. I cannot fix Junkanoo. I miss Junkanoo, too. I'm hurting right now. Um, but what I can say is that today begins National Cultural Heritage Month. And Junkanoo is always a part of that. That's our main feature. And so we're going to do our best to keep Junkanoo alive. We're going to talk about it. We even have some original content. We have a television show all about junk canoe called who got robbed and that's going to be on christmas day and on new year's day i know that this year your organization is also uh setting a schedule of, of, of activities for each week leading into uh, the end of uh december tell us a bit about that sure uh well this week uh culture is undergoing some renovations we're getting a rebrand and so today actually we launch our new facebook page Division of Cultural Affairs, Bahamas. So please log on so that you can follow all of our activities and you can be informed on what's going on in culture in the Bahamas and around the world. So that's going to be in week one. Um, and then at the end of the week, we have a promotional video where you'll hear all about our activities. Uh, starting week two, every Friday, you will turn on your TV, you will go online on our Facebook page, um, and you will see original TV shows by the Division of Cultural Affairs in the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture. We have created um, something called Season of Hope, uh, where we have a sitcom called The Fergusons, and so we're really excited about that. That's going to be Friday, December 11th, Friday, December 18th, and then we're going to shift to Junkanoo, because we miss Junkanoo. Yeah. 
<laughs> so we have this really cool um, ESPN style review show of Junkanoo called Who Got Robbed? So we're going to be looking at the past. We're looking at Junkanoo Boxing Day 2019, um, Junkanoo uh, New Year's Day 2020, and we're reviewing it. And I love the show because you're, you're hearing from Junkanoo analysts and you're getting the breakdown of what goes into Junkanoo, what makes it happen, um, what, why they think who should win. And so we as the viewers can be informed. So it's really exciting. Uh, and then, of course, we have the National Art Gallery of the Bahamas. Today we will launch our national scavenger hunt. It's a digital scavenger hunt. You can log on to nagb.org.bs uh, to find the, the Q code, QR codes. You can go to gas stations and it will lead you to our virtual uh, exhibition. So we have a lot of cool things going on. You can go to the NAGB. We have a sculpture garden uh, park that you can walk around. And so we're looking at socially distant activities that we can engage the Bahamian people in. And most of our activities will be virtual. So you want to log on to our Facebook page, Division of Cultural Affairs Bahamas, um, hashtag committed to the culture, hashtag old fashioned Christmas. All right. And so, again, I know, of course, this year your theme is rejuvenated, re-enhanced, and recommitted to the culture. Yeah. Now, earlier when we spoke, you also told me about the engagement of connecting artists here in the country. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I think that's important. Um, I think that people want to know what is going on with culture. What is culture? Uh, we've been talking a lot about the orange economy, and so it begins with our community. We are the creative community. We are cultural practitioners. And so we're going to capitalize on this uh, virtual platform because the world is now virtual, so we can connect to Bahamians here in Nassau, across the Bahamas, and across the world. So we want to hear from Bahamians. We want to give them a platform to showcase their talents. Um, and of course, we want to have meaningful discourse about our sector. We want to know what are the needs. We want to know what's going on because Bahamians are amazing. And particularly, we want to address STEM fields. So what is STEM? STEM is science, technology, education, arts, and math. And um, I think Bahamians per capita are at the top of all of those industries. Um, and so we're going to explore that and we're going to celebrate what it means to be Bahamian. And of course, engineering as well. For, for STEM. Yeah. Yeah. Now, another thing that I wanted to uh, uh, briefly talk about, now you're going to place your schedule of events on your Facebook page that you uh, just announced as well, but what do you say to locals uh, like myself, uh, who again are missing uh, John Canoe and missing other cultural activities, of course due to COVID-19, there's not much we can do, uh, but do you think that your initiatives uh, will engage people at a level to keep them motivated to move forward? I think so, and it goes back to our theme again. That's why we explored that. It's called, you know, rejuvenated. We need to, to go into 2021 with that renewed energy um, and re-enhanced and recommitted. We want to commit ourselves. So this is an opportunity for us to really connect in a meaningful way. Um, we hope that it will bring a smile to the Bahamian spaces. We hope that it will bring some joy. It's not being on Bay Street. It's not being, you know, in Eleuthera and being on in that rush. It's not being in Abaco and being in, in the love rush. But what it is, is still a celebration of our culture and and exploring what is meaningful and what is relevant so that we can continue our culture and strengthen our culture and begin 2021 right and of course you can't see it but I'm, I'm i have a slight smile on my face based on what she said <laughs> so we'll see how things pan up but of course reporting for the morning edition lord allen zns network news Thanks a lot, Lloyd. Well, the Big Picture Art Studio, located in the Sandy Port Old Town Mall, is a small business like many affected by COVID-19 restrictions. While some businesses were permitted to open their doors, remain closed, and have not been able to offer curbside delivery services due to the nature of the business. So before uh, March, we were able to host events in studio. We were very well known for having intimate painting experiences in studio. But after um, the measures that were put in place, we, just like all businesses, had to step away from having, um, having gatherings in studio. And so we were forced to make some changes. Hebron says those changes have become a saving grace for the business now surviving from themed art projects for kids. She encourages other business owners to explore the halls of creativity in surviving COVID challenges. We initially launched two boxes at the same time, being the Everything Ocean box and our Nature Calls box. Parents really loved them, kids enjoyed them. Those boxes were themed boxes and they had 
uh, between five and six activities between them that we designed and curated ourselves. So the holidays are upon us and there are still some romantics out there hoping to connect with Mr. or Miss Wright as a compliment to the season. While well, local psychologist Dr. Wayne Thompson says we must use COVID as a think tank and know the difference between our needs and wants. This pandemic is an opportunity for all single persons to do an introspection to ensure that they can clarify exactly what it is they need in a relationship and that becomes the template that they will use going forward. Dr. Thompson warns not to become a victim to deception and to do your own virtual background checks to ensure that who someone says they are, they in fact turn out to be. And despite the risk, he says, we must consider using the virtual platform for dating purposes. Dating is not a process where you go rocking in the sand. Absolutely not. You are simply getting to know someone. And if the other person isn't interested in the process, sayonara. As a part of our recognition of Disabilities Awareness Week, we share the story of a young woman who is not letting her condition stop her from achieving her dreams. Here's Lloyd Allen. In 1989, Brenda Charles saw the world for the first time. Like most newborns, she was oblivious to the life she was preparing to live. But as time passed, some things became clear. Brenda was born with a form of dwarfism that stunted her growth to 4 feet 5 inches. Further, she underwent surgery to correct bone issues caused by vitamin D deficiency, later identified as rickets, a leading nutritional cause of dwarfism. I developed at the age 8, where my leg began to twist, and then that's where my situation became, like where I could walk, I had to get surgery done to get my legs fixed properly. Brenda says the surgery was intended to restore her mobility, but that was not her fate. After my surgery, um, I was told I was going to walk, but, but afterwards, it didn't happen. She is grateful for life and today embraces herself as a woman and a professional. I studied at BTVI office assistant. My decision after this is to find a job to see if I can maintain myself and help myself. Brenda is on a social services sponsored scholarship. She says while the help is appreciated, her greatest motivators have been her family at her side from day one. I have a very supportive mother. My mommy will go all the way for me. My father, he is very supportive also. He helps me when it's time for me to get around. And I have two sisters. They really just go all for me. And sometimes when I feel down, they'll call me and encourage me, pray for me and this and that. I thank God for my family. For persons like Brenda, there is also the Training Center for the Disabled on Wolf Road. Managing Director Riviana Smith says over the years she has helped a number of cohorts proving that disability does not mean disabled. In fact, she believes in showcasing the abilities of all her students. Oh, we have students when they came here, they didn't know their hands from their feet. And today we're so proud to say that, that particular student is, I call him a computer genius, looking at their capabilities, looking at their abilities rather than the disability. And that is the problem we had with the parents when they came here because even the gentleman who didn't know his hands from his feet, when we showed his mother the work that he did, she couldn't believe it. And while Brenda's situation is not unique, she says there are some things that able-bodied persons can do to assist persons like herself. Always help disabled when you see their needs. Don't look down at them. For the morning edition, Lloyd Allen, ZNS Network News. And we have some sad news this morning. Veteran educator Sadie Curtis has died. Curtis died peacefully in her home with family by her side. She was 95 years old. Sadie Curtis, whom a school was named in her honor in 2001, had a stellar career in education from 1941 until her retirement in 1984. It was at this time that Sadie Curtis impacted the lives of thousands of Bahamians, many of whom have become successful nation builders. The veteran educator leaves behind four children. And that's a wrap for us this morning for the entire team. I'm LaDawn Davis. Have a great day, everyone.